What's up, my people? Welcome to the Comeback Champion Summit. My name is Mark Clark. I think uh, LL Cool J said it best. Don't call it a comeback. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> I think that's the lyric. Um, I got a few things for you as we talk about being a champion. Uh, three points. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get out. I'm not going to make it long because I know y'all have been listening to speeches all day. So, um, like I said, my name is Mark Clark. If you don't know me, I'm a media guy. I've been in media for over 30 years. Within this presentation, I will share some of my stories. Hopefully, I won't bore you. Okay, number one, my first point is champions never quit. They're always learning. Um, I recently have this, uh, I created this platform called Reinventing Mark Clark. And now little did I know, I started this in November of 2020. And people, I think, identify, who know me, identify with this comeback champion uh, theme. And they know I do because it appears as though I've come back. <laughs> uh, so in November of uh, 2020, I started reinventing Mark Clark. Uh, again, this kind of movement happened after I was let go, me and my wife were released from a radio station. We've been there for about 18 months. But as someone who's kind of been through that process many times before, I was a little, I was a little bit, I don't really get down. I was a little bit down, a little bit down. Okay. I was overweight. I had gained some weight over those, uh, you know, past two years. I lost my father-in-law. I was a caretaker of my father-in-law. I lost my mother. So I had some big stuff happening. And then we lost this job. And this job was great because my wife, who's a news anchor in the DC area, and myself, we got a chance to work together to do this thing on a historic radio station. I was so excited and it lasted almost 18 months, right? And so I started reinventing Mark Clark to kind of reset, to refocus. You know, I need to lose this weight. I need to look at my career. I need to figure things out. So I started this reinventing Mark Clark. I started reinventing Mark Clark page on uh, Facebook. I started my website. And so it started with me getting on the treadmill, seven o'clock in the morning, and I had a message, and just me walking, just me walking on the treadmill with a message, right? It started, like I said, in uh, 2020, uh, November, I was 372 pounds, okay? It was 372 pounds, the heaviest I'd ever been, and with the death of my mom and my father-in-law, I gained like 40 pounds, and so, I mean, I wasn't a little guy, but I'm just saying, this was the heaviest I'd ever been. So I get on the treadmill, I start doing this every day, and man, it started to pick up. You know, I started to pick up. My group on Facebook grew to over 100 people. My website, my, uh, my uh, page on YouTube grew to over 1,000 subscribers. I decided when I started this reinventing thing and this weight loss thing that, you know what? I'm gonna get a little help and I'm gonna do the weight loss surgery, okay? So I did the weight loss surgery in April, right? And so from the time I started at 372 in November and the time I had my uh, weight loss surgery, it was April 19th, 2021, I am now at 275, almost 100 pounds, right? 275. So did that. In the process, you know, I got this great group of people who joined the reinventing movement they were reinventing themselves also. So they joined along and we became these virtual friends. And during this whole pandemic, we bonded together and we were rolling. And so we losing weight. And then <laughs> I landed a TV gig. So yes, I'm in this beautiful, this beautiful studio at a TV station. Now who knew when that whole thing started in, uh, 2020 and I was at a place that I felt like I had to restart that I would land not only a television gig but a TV gig at the same station where my wife recently started working so I'm part of this show called Great Day Washington and that's you know so <laughs> that seems unbelievable it seems that way to myself also but it goes it talks about what happens right and what champions do. And what is that? Champions don't stop, okay? Champions understand that life is full of challenges, wins and losses, 
And I've come to the conclusion, thanks to my father-in-law, my late father-in-law, who used to always say, there's no bad, only good, that at the end of the day, you keep on pushing and something's going to come your way. So champions understand that you never stop. You're always learning. You're always growing. You're always getting better. There's always a lesson to learn. There's not, you know, when things, when bad, quote unquote, bad things happen, it's not really bad things happening. It's a challenge, right? It's a, a learning opportunity. And sometimes it hurts like hell. Sometimes it shakes you to your core. But champions understand that what you going to do? You ain't going to stop. You're going to keep on going. One of my favorite, my favorite, uh, I guess a skit, but it's really a commentary Richard Pryor has. It's, it's, it's when he burned himself up. <laughs> when he burned himself up. And Jim Brown, who even to this day in his 80s seems like a superhero, he comes to the hospital and he asks Richard those remarkable questions. What you going to do now, Rich? <laughs> and I think it's so... I love it because it's like, look, basically you burnt yourself up, you didn't die, so what you going to do now? And the answer, of course, is to live. And Richard went on to, you know, have a career and go and do other things. But Jim Brown, basically that simple, simple question is one that happens or a question that occurs in everybody's life, usually at the worst point or at a super terrible point. When you have to ask yourself, what you going to do? You going to keep living? You going to die? You going to quit? And champions understand that the answer is always, I'm going to keep living and I'm going to press on. All right? That's number one. Number two, champions are good people and want to make people around them better. Now, look, a lot of people that we consider to be winners and champions, you know, some of them aren't the best people on earth. But I will say that at some point in their life, it might not happen when they are, you know, in their prime in their sport or in their prime in their business. But there comes a time, there comes a time when champions understand you got to be a good person. And not only be a good person, you want to make other people better. That's a true champion, okay? Now, you know, I think it's interesting as we watch Michael Jordan, who many consider the greatest to play. Hmm. Um, you know, as a player, he focused on basketball. He wasn't Mr. Out in the Community, Mr. You know, that wasn't his thing. In fact, he became, uh, people criticized him for that. But as you know, as he gets older, you're starting to see more of Michael Jordan reaching out, more of Michael Jordan uh, doing things to bring the community to, uh, together, make it better. And he always was doing that, but he chose to focus on the game. And we let's keep it real. Now, if you ain't, if you're not, if he wasn't who he was on the court, it wouldn't open up the avenues for who he wants to be off the court. So I'm not going to, we're not going to get into that, but I just wanted to talk about that. Even Kobe Bryant, you know, now that Kobe passed away in such a tragic way, Kobe, as a young man, we all heard the stories. He wasn't the nicest guy. He was he was solely focused on being the best basketball player he could be and being the best champion he could be on that basketball court. One of the stories that just came out, one of the players said, I, I had to laugh because I said, that is so Kobe, the young Kobe. One of the players he played with said that he came up to Kobe during a game and was trying to say something. And Kobe said, hey, man, look, you are not... Basically, you're not worthy of having a conversation with me, okay? Based on how you practice and based how you play this game, you're not worthy to be talking to me right now, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. I know it's not, it's not, it's the worst. That is a jerk, okay? But Kobe was not having it. He wanted everybody to have the, the same zeal, the same fire, the same dedication and determination that he had in playing this game, including Shaq, who he criticized Shaq and said Shaq could have been a better player. We could have won more championships if Shaq got in shape. That was young Kobe, okay? Over time, he softened a bit, but he had to learn. <laughs> and, 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 and by the time we lost Kobe, you know, just recently, Kobe was a different guy. Right. He understood the humanity of being a human and he understood 
you know, some other aspects. But there was a time when he was just all about winning those games, right? Champions understand that there's more to life than just winning games. Something that I, I never will forget, a friend of mine, shout out to uh, Safir Rob. For years, I worked with Safir, and uh, Safir worked in the United Emirates, and he worked in, he worked in, um, in uh, Silicon Valley. And so I actually had the, the opportunity to meet uh, some of the high level, I mean, the guys that wrote the book on uh, investment in Silicon Valley and uh, Bill Campbell, you know, Coach Bill Campbell, who was um, Steve Jobs' mentor. And I met a couple other guys who were in that same, same, you know, that same level. And the thing that was interesting about this at this point, you know, that, you know, we lost Bill Campbell a couple years ago, but he, a guy who was a winner, a guy, when you talk about financially, you talk about, you know, again, all those, you know, high level, um, uh, in, you know, technology investments happened under his watch uh, and that whole Silicon Valley, that whole group of guys. The thing that I thought was interesting is we met at the office, but where we met secondly was we all went to this grade school where his kids were <laughs> and not just him, but the other guys that were there also. They all were all a part again, of, of the, the, the tech investment, uh, you know, that, that boom that happened. And here they were, guys in their 60s, 70s, some of them, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, who had kids who were like eight years old because their first families, the first families didn't have, they didn't have dad. They didn't have, dad was busy making money. Dad was busy, you know, running the world. But now they got dad at 70 something, they're there, you know, watching their kids, you know, at this, this school, uh, they had a soccer game. So they were soccer practice. They were all involved because they understood that there's more to life than winning and more to life than being the champion and more than being a billionaire. You know, the humanity part of life, the, being the dad, being there for the kids, they understood and they knew that, you know, the clock was ticking and that these are lessons they needed to learn and, and be involved with before the old ticker gave out. And in his case, it gave out not too long after that visit. But I'm just saying, champions understand that there's more to life than just being the winner. Um, there's there's a humanity part, caring for others, making things better for others, and creating opportunities for others. Okay. And lastly, champions act like champions. This one for me happened. Um, it happened on my last radio job, and I and I learned something, and it was like. It was, it was something that it hurt to learn at this point in the game in my 50s, but I'm so glad I got it because guess what? I got it. And hopefully, if you guys are watching this and you're younger, you'll get it too. And hopefully it's clear and makes sense. So what I came, I came with this, I came across this or I came to this conclusion, not about champions, but it still fits. Basically, you can be legendary. You can be legendary but not act like a legend. <laughs> so you can, we can apply that to championship too. Well, you can be, you know, you can have championship behavior, but you not be a champion or act like a champion. So what am I talking about? So this last radio gig, and I'm not going to mention the station. Many of you guys, people who know me, they know the station, but the experience, it really kind of threw me for a loop when I started this whole reinventing thing. But what I, it, it, it had, this recently happened. I, I had this, I came to this conclusion probably a couple weeks ago. And I, I had to look at myself in the eye and I had to fess up. So for those who don't know me, I'm a radio guy who's been in radio for over 30 years. And I think, you know, I would, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I had a very successful uh, radio career. And in it, I won the awards. And I won the, the, you know, I won the awards. I got the acknowledgement, whatever, whatever. And so, um, you know, I say, uh, you can be legendary. My, my time in Baltimore probably was the time I had the most success, Baltimore, Mark Clark and the Big Fat Morning Show, multiple awards. And, you know, uh, we were there for almost a decade, had an impact in the community, blah, 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 blah. So the experience at this radio station, though, my last experience, what I realized, I was feeling a certain way pe towards the people, my bosses or my ex-bosses. But then I had, I had to be honest with myself. And I said, you know what? I let fear, and you know, that's the big word, you know, men especially, we don't like to say that. 
fear, scared. That's not me. But I let fear um, take me out of my game. Because when I came in the door, when I came in the door, you know, in radio, basically, you have what's called a board. That's the controls. You run, you know, you do your own, you do your own controls. That's something I always did in my life. I never really had somebody else do that for me, right? And, and I hadn't been on the radio for a minute, and I was concerned that I'd be rusty, and I wouldn't be as sharp, and I'd worked at this company before, and it, and it could be pretty critical. And so, and I was going with my wife. So I basically relinquished control of the board, which was against how I do it, how I normally would do things. But again, I said, well, I, I didn't want to be rusty. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get off to a start and be shaky. So I relinquished the board and that in, in relinquishing the board, I gave away the power and giving away the power. That's why, in my opinion, a lot of things did not work. And even if they didn't, even if they did work, or didn't work. It didn't represent me. It didn't represent how I normally do things because this was the first time in my 30 year career that I did not do the board. And why didn't I do it? I said it was because I didn't want to sound rusty. I didn't want to this. I didn't want to do that. But it was fear. Mm, it was fear. And it's okay to have fear. We all have that. But in doing that fear, I relinquished, you know, a comfort level. I relinquished an aspect of my personality that wouldn't allow me to deliver the kind of show I needed to deliver. And champions and legends, they don't do that. They don't do that. You think Michael Jordan would have given up himself for the team as far as a new coach comes in and says, Michael, you're going to do this? No. He's going to work with the coach, right? Michael Jordan, any legend, you're, Ray Lewis, anybody you, anybody you think of, Donnie Simpson, no. They're not going to do that. And I, and I did that because I let the fear creep in. And so champions act like champions. Now, I don't want y'all to take it the wrong way <laughs> and say, you know, say that, well, in being inflexible and not working with people and not listening to great ideas and not being opening to idea, open to ideas. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying a champion moves like a champion in that a champion has lessons that they've learned, they acquire their experience over time, and they stand on that. And if it means that, you know, I'm going to do this situation and I can't rely on what I bring to the table, then it's probably is not the right table for me. Right? That's how champions move. And so that's a lesson that I learned, like I said, the hard way and later in life. But the blessing is that I learned it. Now, uh, and that's my third point. So hopefully you can take these points and they can uh, help you as you continue to be a champion or you arrive at being a champion. Um, but again, these are some things that, I, that I've learned and hopefully, like I said, that uh, they can help you out and they can help motivate you to be the champion that you are. And, that's the, and lastly, let me just say this. You have everything you need to be the champion you want to be. You have everything you need to live the life that you want to live. It's already in there. It's just like that commercial. I don't know some of y'all remember. It's in there. Was it Ragu? It's in there. It's in there. That system you believe in, God, Allah, you know, uh, the universe has given you everything you need. You just have to go ahead and access it. You just have to believe in it. You just have to know that it's there. You just have to know that it's there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Go on, be a champion.